So I mentioned that right from the start in the American experience, uh, we amount to a new settlement in which we're allowed to exercise liberty. Right? The, the dissettlement of Europe leads to the settlement of what becomes the United States. There are various types of settlers. Uh, they come here for religious reasons. They come here for economic reasons. But for everyone, to quote one historian, most Americans see freedom around the corner if they're willing to take on the enterprise to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And because they want this freedom, the freedom to do X, Y, or Z, they're going to tend to allow their neighbor to pursue X, Y, and Z in their own individual exercise of liberty. So self-rule is kind of the first part of the puzzle of understanding 17th and 18th century America. But another part of the puzzle comes from something that we've discussed already. And that is the growing belief that America and Americans might be able to come together and to establish a republic. Now, what's been the, the most um, fantastic form of a republic ever in human history, I've already mentioned it uh, in module one, it's the Roman Republic. So what begins to happen in 18th century America is they take a closer look at what Republican mores were, what Republican norms were, and they begin to take a look at who were the Republican heroes of Rome. And there's one hero in particular, a Roman named Cato, who is the exemplar of Roman excellence. Uh, he's gifted with a variety of different talents. He's a great speaker. He's, he's courageous. He's bold. Uh, but he very much dedicates all of his talents to the glory that is the Roman Republic. The common good for Cato, the good of all Rome, is essential to him. It's front and center of all of his ambitions. He subsumes them to Rome itself. Well, a playwright named Joseph Addison in the 18th century writes a play called Cato. And Cato, of all of the works of art and culture, is the one work that is most embraced by Americans in the 18th century. George Washington says it's his favorite play of all time. Well, what transpires in that play? Cato, the Roman Republican who loves the common good of Rome, uh, is confronted with Caesar. And Caesar sends an embassy to Cato and says, Caesar wants you to be his friend. What he's saying is, Caesar wants you to come under his wing. He will take care of you. You will be able to rule with him. He will celebrate you as a person. You will continue to be loved uh, by Rome. Uh, but you will do so under my authority, and Cato will have none of it. Cato chooses the Roman Republic over Caesar. He chooses to fight with Caesar and his forces rather than to give in to Caesar's power. So hence, Cato becomes this great exemplar of what it means to be lowercase r Republican. Don't do what is good for your own person. Don't bend around the power of an emperor, but embrace the common good of your community. Have a sense as to what is good for the people around you and care about them rather than the power or glory that you may gain for yourself by going along with the status quo. Well, here you're thinking in the 18th century American experience, uh, we are made up of colonies and our mother country is Great Britain. And who rules over Great Britain? Oh, the king. So there's a beginning of a parallel of thinking of kings and England as being the equivalent of Caesar and that Roman Empire that rules over us with a strict and iron fist. And this desire right, to do what? Uh, to reestablish lowercase r Republican norms in this new world. So a lot of the land of hope that McClay is talking about is a hope that embraces a new republic being formed in this country. Republicanism, along with self-rule, defining the 18th century American experience.